Hello and welcome to the legendary college football show featuring Coach Rudy Hubbard, the legend himself. I'm his son, Dr. Sean. We have a good time talking about college football and all sorts of other things. We got a nice hot topic today. So many things are changing, Daddy. So many things that it got people running away and running in all directions, you know, just don't know how to handle it. This week, I was really inspired. <laughs> We're going to use that word when I saw Coach Saban sitting next to Senator Ted Cruz and they were putting on a presentation. I'm going to say a presentation. And it was just four minutes of testimony that I saw, but it was loaded with a lot of things. It made me feel like, wow, how is Coach Saban saying such wild and crazy things? I mean, the way he said it didn't sound wild and crazy. You like a chance to listen to it together. And so um, one of the things that caught my attention was he said that down through the years, we were trying to figure out a way for these uh, players to be academically supported and get some personal development. And now we got this system where people are uh, being paid. Sounds like he's making the assertion that if you have academic, I mean, if you have payment, that you can't academically support people and help them develop their um, person. What do you say about that? It sounds outlandish to me. Well, I, I think on one hand, he's uh, he, he's got a point. I do think there needs to be some guidelines that, that it needs to be thought out. But, I mean, all kind of good is happening right now. I mean, these guys need to get paid. I just saw a lot of players come back, whereas they're going to come back and play an extra year, whereas uh, – you know, compared to jumping out there too early, going pro because they have to go pro because they can't financially support themselves unless they get out there and try to make some money, you know. But by having it set up the way it's set up right now, some of these guys can come back and, and get another year of development, which they really need, uh, academic development and physical development. You know, some of these guys just weren't ready to go out there and play against grown men, but but if they see that money out there and, and there's no other way for them to get a chance to do it, they, they're losing their scholarship money, uh, you know, then they're going to take a chance on it. And it, it, it's not a good chance because what, what these guys are doing is they're getting cut, they're getting hurt, uh, and, and really don't have anything to, don't have anything to, to, to stand for. You know, they've made nothing. So, I mean, you know, a lot of times people think that just because they get drafted and they, they make it to the pros that everything is done. You know, these guys have got – they're set. But they still got to get out there and they got to make the team. They, they got to show that they're, they're worth it, that money that is getting ready to be paid. Nobody's just giving it away. And so uh, I think I think the way that they're doing it right now, if they put some, some, some guardrails on it where – you know, it's reasonable and guys can come back and, and they need to get paid. There's no question about that. Nobody's arguing that. Uh, too long now, you know, the coaches have been making all of the money, the lion's share of the money and the athletic directors and all of that. And and people come to see the players and the players have been getting nothing. And so that I just, just didn't think that was fair at all. So uh <laughs> I think I think guidelines would help, and I hope that's that's what's about to happen. I think, as a matter of fact, that's what I think is happening. But I think at the same time, I want us to say, relative to that conversation there, that uh, Coach Saban, I, I think it's just good timing for him. I think it's it you know because now you're getting some of these other programs who are getting great players. It's going to be a lot of competition for Alabama. Alabama won't be the same Alabama it's been dominating like it's been over the years. You know, some of these other schools and 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 some of it Coach Saban created, you know. And the gentleman at Texas, uh, I mean, Coach Saban was his mentor, you know. And so, I mean, that's what happens. And so same thing with the guy at uh, – um, well, several of, the, several of these coaches out there now with head coaching jobs, they went to Alabama. Happened at Georgia. 
the Georgia coach, Kirby. You know, I mean, he he, he created this, but it, it, it's changing the landscape, and they're gonna, it's created a lot of competition. So I think at the same time, it's made it convenient for him to just <laughs> slide on out. The other thing that was a weird look is when you have millionaire um, grown men saying that we don't want uh, freedom to transfer and free agency. We have some issues with uh, how it's being done, you know. Um, you know, I, I might ask you, you said there need to be some guardrails. Let me just yeah. ask, why do they need to, why do they need to be uh, guardrails? Because that's being said a lot. Let me just ask why. Well, I think what, what happens is some of these, you, you, you know, we're talking about competing. That's what, we, I mean, we're talking about and so if you take one school uh, just because, of the, you know, they have, the, they have the money, you know, they can get out there and it, it can be real crazy where they go out there and pay somebody $2 million uh, coming out of high school. And, and I don't think that's going to be something that can last because you got, you got a player who's already on the team and already has – Establish his worth and his value, and it, you, if you're not going to pay him some, you know, something competitive to what you're talking about, paying some young guy that hasn't even been out there on the football field yet. Uh, that that's the kind of guardrail that I'm talking about. I just think there's some unfairness that'll be going on with the with the players that are already on the team, and it's going to create some dissension. It's going it's going to create, you know, who's going to want. Who's gonna want a young man coming in there making a lot more money than 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 they've been paid, and uh, never even played in a game? And I I think it's gonna create some big problems. I think they gotta address that. I saw that what you know, and that saved some guys' lives the way I look at it. You know that that's the way I see it. I mean I see a lot of these players would have had to jump out and go pro. Because, you know, several of the players that are coming back and getting another year, which I think they really need, they really physically are jumping out there early. Because they only got, they're only going to college for two years, and then they're eligible to go pro. And uh, I just don't think they're physically developed and, and sometimes mentally developed to go out there like that. I think they needed to take that extra time and go ahead and develop themselves on both ends. So if they can do that and get 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 a, get paid, get reasonable amount of money, you know, most of these guys get car deals. They they and and then they can have a reasonable amount of money. But if they could be fair with it across the board with the players. You know the players coming in and the players that are already there. Then I think those are guardrails I'm talking about. <laughs> now, okay. now, you know, I'm All not right. talking. I'm not talking about locking a guy in where he can't go if he if he if he's unhappy and he wants to go someplace else. I don't. I don't think that. I don't agree with that. I don't think that should be a problem. You know, I think they should. The guy should be able to go someplace where he can. He can be happy and, and feel like his value is being realized. Mm, mm -hmm. I'm just considering other industries where if you have world-class talent, I mean, actually world-class, you know, then you have the opportunity to have a bigger price tag. Like if you're a professional speaker or a professional coach, um, uh, if you're a professional, almost anything except just, I mean, not necessarily manual labor, you know, right. Although I think that people should be getting paid, but if you're a professional, uh, professional sales person, they have a fight with it. And I'm not sure if they're guardrails and all of these other industries, but the assertion that was made was that there are guardrails in all those other industries. I'm just not so sure if it's true. So I just wanted to ask about that. And um, there's also the idea of pay for play. I see that terminology in this context. And I wonder how fair that is. Most of the times that I have heard this quote unquote pay for play um, term being used, it was, I want to play this game. I got money. 
I'm going to pay, you know, like in politics and people, let's say businesses that are for politicians um, attention and then they pay a politician to get their attention uh, to be able to play. And and it feels dirty when it, usually it's used, you know, pay for play. And uh, now I hear it being used here where there's been a lot of not just competition, but one sided competition, competition uh, forever. You know, wasn't a problem then. And is it pay for play? Actually, what are your comments on on that? How we're using pay for play? You know, but, you know what? What I think. What's happening is that a lot of these guys are caught up in this recruiting. They get a guy and they think that, I mean, because that's the way it's been, the guy would be locked in. You know, he, he would have to, I mean, they're, they're for years, once you recruit a young man onto a program, they would have to play there. If they transferred at all, they would have to wait out a year to even be eligible to play again at the other school. A lot of times during that year, all kind of things would happen. And many times the guy would end up not being able to play at all because of some of the things that would happen during that time. And and if they didn't have resources to do it, then basically they just couldn't, they couldn't make the transfer, but they were unhappy, you know? Uh, and so I think, I think that's what the, a lot of these coaches now, they're, they're used to that system, that system of having these guys locked in. A guy's locked in and broke and uh and unhappy at the same time. And that that's okay with the coach because the coach feels like, okay, you made your decision. Now you got to, <laughs> you know, you gotta sleep in that bed now, you know. And consequences. Yeah, yeah. So that's I think that's what they're referring to. But my 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 concern is is not in that in that area. Right there, I think that players uh, should be able to leave if if they're not feeling happy there, because many times the coaches are doing the same thing. They're leaving, you know. They're not they're not happy. They're leaving because they need to make more money. They feel like they they're worth more money, and they have the ability to leave. And I don't think it's fair to be able to allow the coaches to do that, and then to say, okay, we got these players, and and you know. They, they they bring value to our university, but once they get here, they're locked in. And 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 I, I just think it should be fair across the board. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna uh, mention um you say across the board, and also we saw some comments and some let's say concerns, quote unquote, expressed about what about other sports not getting the same opportunities within a school and during my lifetime and i'm sure during uh, coach saban's uh, career we saw let's say baseball go from being the number one sport to football being the number one sport and we saw college football really skyrocket in terms of people's interest and in terms of money going into it and in terms of money going into the institution i mean when it really comes down to it Football is the main attraction. And so there's been unequal attention and unequal pay. Like it or not, that's what people want. That's what the market wants. And so um, I don't know. Is that an issue here? Other sports? Uh, what am I missing here? I could be uh, missing a blind spot. Oh, uh, it's just, it's an issue. and it's it's. But I think it's going to get fixed. I really do. I think that part. I think what's happened is that we've created something in a hurry and I don't, I don't think it's, it's the end of it. I think it's, I think we, what we're about to do, it's all money related and it's all generated from television money. And if they don't fix it correctly, what's going to happen. And, and you, you can, you heard it here first. <laughs> what's going to happen is football is just going to take off and become its own entity. Because what right now, if you you take the Big Ten and you got to play Ohio State uh, has to play UCLA. Well, because they're all in the Big Ten, now the basketball team, Ohio State, has to play UCLA. So you're talking about travel, 
you talk about loads of money. Women's basketball got to play UCLA. And and they can't afford it. You know, I mean they they they're not generating that kind of income that football is generating. And but they still got all the expenses that, that football has in terms of travel just to play the game. And so I think the adjustment that's going to be made, I've heard some guys talk about it already, is that football's going to become, if they don't get it fixed, football's going to become its own entity by itself. And the, and the other sports won't have to follow those same rules. I think that's what, about what's going to happen. Uh, so it's a problem right now because they hadn't had time to fix it. They made these, this adjustment so quickly they, they hadn't had a chance to really think that thing through properly. Players are getting paid. That's what they had to get fixed in a hurry. Players are getting paid. But I, I think the part that I think is going to have to be fair is they're going to have to have an amount. There's going to have to be a, an amount because not, not because of, it'll be because you got players already on the team who have established their value and their worth to the team. And it, it, it's got to be able to be afforded. And so you can't get so outlandish that you got high school guys coming that never played a game. They're making a couple million dollars and they come out there and twist the ankle real bad and never play. But then you got guys on the team been playing for three or four years already and, and you're not paying them a fair amount. That, that That's the part that I think has to be adjusted. I don't have a problem with if a guy has value and he and and he's not happy with what he's getting for his value, picking up and leaving and going someplace else where they recognize his value. I, I think that should be allowed. I think that should be allowed across the board. But I just don't mm. think I don't think bringing young men in who never really played to come in there and 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 and, and have the same value or more than the guys that have already established themselves. Hmm. So there are right now in neurology residency, and when they get out in July, they will come out and generate the same income that I make in my 24th year. That's just the fact, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it is, you know. It sounds like real life to me, but okay, you know, I guess that's the the argument. I mean, is it fair? You know, it's real life, and it's been that way for a while for me. So, well, you're gonna see it. You're gonna see some adjustments being made. I can tell you that right now because they're already talking about it. And yeah, there's too much money on the table, uh, and and all the money that ESPN is standing to make just by televising these games, they're going to have to split it up. And it's going to have to be split up in a reasonable manner. And, that, right. and, and I, I tell you, what I'm talking about right now is the way that they're going to do it, I believe. That's what I've heard. Okay, I believe you. Yeah, I believe you. And, uh, yeah, we'll watch it. And uh, we'll watch it and uh, enjoy it, you know, and uh, still argue about it. You know, we, we, we'll always be talking about that one, I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, just because it's, you know, it's here to stay. It's not going anywhere. You, you yeah, got talent, one, one, you got money. One, one more thing I wanted to mention on that, though, too, is that. Okay. You got, you you know, right now, they're calling it, uh, I'm just, I'm using the Big Ten, but, you know, the other is the S -S SEC. Those two leagues are going to dominate the money, okay? But you talk about, right now, you talk about the Big Ten, but they got something like 18 teams. It's not, it's not 10. A lot of people misunderstand that. It's not 10 anymore. It's, it's grown to that. But then you got some schools, they won't generate that kind of energy. We're not talking about women, but it's not just women. I mean, you're talking about some football programs right in the Big Ten that won't generate. I mean, nobody's going to pay that kind of money to see them play like they will to see University of Michigan play Alabama. Okay, and so what's going to happen to those teams that won't generate that income? I think there's going to be some kind of guardrails put on that situation. 
you know, some of those teams are going to have to really show that they can carry their own weight or they're going to get put out of the league is what my, what my concern is. That they actually get put out of the Big Ten or out of yeah, out of the Big Ten and out, or out of the SEC, you know, because to to oh, right. to make room for some of the some of the powerhouses out there right now, like for instance, University of Texas is going to SEC, you know, Oklahoma, you know, all these schools are joining the SEC and the Big Ten. Well, to make room for them, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna boot some people out that won't carry their weight. That's, that's just what not, okay. that's just the way life works. And so it will, it, it'll behoove all of these athletic directors that, you know, they got to build their programs so that they can carry their weight just to be able to stay in. You know, right now, Florida State, you know, everybody's still talking about what happened last year when they went undefeated and still didn't make the playoffs. And that's because you know that they that they're in ACC. You know they they were not in a position to dominate. Like, I mean, they took Alabama instead of them, right? Who had already lost a game. So that's what we're getting to. And, I, and I'm saying that you know what's going to happen are these powerhouses, the ones that have been working towards this all these all this time, domination. They're going to continue to dominate, and it's going to be, it's going to be the money now, and we're, we're talking billions. <laughs> yeah, so it, it won't be the same as, it won't be the same as a young intern doctor coming out. <laughs> it's going to be crazy, you know. Some of these schools are going to be making a big dollar. So, so, but, but I think the ones like Florida State now they're making the adjustment. They know what happened, and so they're. They're giving it everything they got to get into the Big Ten before the before next year comes around. Right, right. So that sounds like what we were talking about before. Crucial that crucial times and people are getting compensated for it. And then the more they get paid for it, the universities, well, then they get a chance to pay for play, you know, like what you were saying before, holding their weight. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I see it in that context for sure. All righty. Well, there you have it, folks. I think we've teased this pretty well. I'm pretty sure that I got to express my concerns about uh, some of the ideas here. We'll continue to, to discuss them. And uh, and uh, I appreciate your perspective, Daddy, or really, yeah. Es oh, yeah. especially because I think that some of this is generational, how we look at this. Uh, a lot of it has to do with our experiences that we've had before. And um, I'm sure that if we talk about this to your grandsons and granddaughters and, and my nieces and nephews and sons, that they'll certainly have a different perspective. So I hope you all out there enjoyed this particular conversation and this discussion on this evolving topic. Things are happening all the time in college football. I'm always amazed. I'm obviously paying more attention now than I did before. Daddy, I've been pushing back topics each week because every week something new comes up and it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so keep watching this channel. Um, we'll keep it going and uh, like and subscribe. We appreciate your comments uh, big time and the consideration that you give to these ideas and your contribution. Until next week, keep winning, guys. All right. All right.